Thank you for listening to Life Worship Center, 1604 Golden Springs Road. And now, today's sermon.
You see, we've got two words we use a lot too. It's I can't. But I'm so thankful in spite of my I can't, God can say I will. Amen? He says, I will give them one heart. I will give them a new spirit. They will be my people. And I will be their God. This is God's preview. I want to give you three things that this preview tells us. First off, it tells us this, that the Spirit will include. Include. The Spirit will include. Let me tell you about a little story in the book of Numbers. Moses was God's leader. He was anointed by God. The Holy Spirit was upon him. He led a couple million people at least out of Egypt through the wilderness. How many knows that leading a couple million people would be a little bit burdened? Amen? How many knows that sometimes leading just a couple hundred people can get a little heavy at times? Right? How many knows if you're in management, leading ten people can be difficult sometimes? Now put yourself in Moses' shoes. He's leading a couple million people. And God understands that this is heavy. And so God directs Moses in Numbers chapter 11. He says, I want you to get 70 elders. And I want you to bring them to the tabernacle. And God says, I'm going to take the spirit that is upon you. And I'm going to place the spirit upon them. And so they're going to have your passion. They're going to have your heart. They're going to have your concern for the people. And they're going to just get excited thinking about this. Because this is my prayer that God gives all of us that. He says, I'm going to do that. So Moses brings the 70 up to the tabernacle. And God does it. He takes the spirit that is upon Moses. And he places it upon the 70. And all of a sudden these 70 start prophesying. I mean, the Spirit is on them, and they're turning it loose. They are prophesying. But something happens. There's these two fellows that are still in the camp, and they're elders also. The Spirit hits them as well. Their name is Eldad and Nadad. And they start prophesying in the camp. And so this man goes and runs to Moses and says, Moses, there's trouble in the camp. These two dudes are prophesying. It's, it's like something's got a hold of them. They're, they're strange, acting funny. And Joshua, Moses' right-hand man, Joshua says, Moses, you need to do something about that. And this is where we pick up Moses, chapter 11, verse 29. Then Moses said to him, Are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets. And that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. See, Moses didn't see it as a bad thing that someone else was prophesying, that someone else had a heart for the people of God, that someone else had a burden for people. Moses was tickled. He was happy. He was excited that it wasn't just him, but that it was other people. And this was a preview of how God would, in the last days, Pour out his spirit, not just upon leaders, not just upon pastors or prophets or teachers or TV evangelists, but that God would pour out his spirit on all flesh. Amen? And he's made of flesh today. Come on. Raise your hand. That's the same people that watched AD. I don't know about the rest of the people. All flesh. He says it this way in Joel chapter 2, verse 28, 29. It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. It's very important that we know because you might read this and say, how do we know that's happened? We know it's happened because on Pentecost, you saw the fellow there in that preview, that was Peter. And you can see like the change when the spirit came into him. We know that Peter, after Pentecost, he got out there and started preaching, and he read from Joel chapter 2. And he said, today this has been fulfilled in your presence. And so he says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And 
and also on my men's servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Do you hear God's preview of Pentecost? He says, all flesh, and even though we didn't all raise our hands, we are all flesh. He said, your sons, he said, your daughters, that means men and women. He says, the old, he says, the young, he says, the rich, the poor. There's no social class, there's no culture, there's no discrimination with God. If you are in this place today and you are breathing in and breathing out, the Holy Spirit can be poured out upon you. And God greatly desires to do that for you. What a preview. Makes you want to experience the real thing if you have it. The great news is this. We are not living in the days of preview anymore. We are living in the latter days. For the Spirit has been poured out upon all flesh. Somebody say amen. If you're not filled with the Holy Spirit today, if you have not received Christ into your life today, may I ask you why not? What is limiting you? Do you feel that your past is too dark? It isn't. Do you feel like you're too poor, too insignificant? You're not. Do you feel like you're too dignified, too high class? You need him just as much as us blue mountain rednecks. Amen. <laughs> Do you feel like God does not want to pour out His Spirit upon your vessel and into your vessel? You are wrong. He does. Amen? He does. I'm not really a redneck. You don't know that, right? The Spirit will be pleased. That's why it's so important that we as a church do not exclude who God includes. Amen? That's why we as a church must not give up on those whom God has not given up on. Amen? Because the preview of Pentecost said, I will pour it out on who so am. Number two, spirit will imbue. It's one of those words we don't use. I don't use. You may use it all the time. I don't know. Luke 24 and 49. Listen to this. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are imbued with power from on high. The word imbued means to put on. God's preview of Pentecost says that there will come a day when he will clothe, he will imbue people with his spirit and his power. I want you to look at a few of these previews of Pentecost. First, we see the life of Gideon. In Judges 6 and 34, it says the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Gideon was endued by the Spirit of, of the Lord, and his army of 300 men overcame the Midianite army of 135,000. And all they had in their hands were trumpets and pitchers and torches. That's all they had in their hand. But you know what they had upon them? They were endued with the power of the Holy Spirit. And they circled that camp of the Midianites and they blew their trumpets and they broke those pitchers and their lights shone and those Midianite armies, they looked around and they heard the blast of the trumpet. They saw all these lights, but we must not lose this. It was not the lights or the trumpets or the breaking that confused them. It was the Holy Spirit of God that went into the enemy's camp and confused their mind and put fear into their hearts and caused Gideon and his army to defeat them. They never had to really even lift a hand. The army, the enemy armies pretty much booked themselves. That's pretty good that God could do that. Samson was one 
We preached on Samson a couple months ago. In Judges 14 and 6, the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And he tore the lion apart. That's just one of the things that Samson did. But we must understand, it wasn't because Samson worked out so much and he was so muscular. It wasn't because, you know, he was taking performance enhancing drugs, right? It was because the power of the Lord was upon him. He was endued with, this was a preview. Let's see, we need to see this. This was a preview of Pentecost. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that things that happened in the Old Testament was to shine a light for us to see the glory of Jesus, to see what God would do in the new covenant. So when we look and see these mighty men of God doing these things, we must see that that is a preview of what God has done in our day. It's an eye opener. Joseph was clothed by the Spirit. In Genesis 41 and 38, Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this? A man in whom is the Spirit of God? Joseph was able to interpret dreams. Joseph had great wisdom, foresight. Why? It was the power of the Spirit of God upon him. God does that today. In Ezekiel 37, we remember that there is a valley and it's full of Bones. And I want you to know what this valley represented. This valley, Ezekiel 37, it represented the defeated, the dead, the dry, and the divided. The dead, the defeated, the dry, and the divided. And he said to me, prophesy to the breath. What do you think of breath is? It is the Holy Spirit of God. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. I want you to hear me today. The preview says to us that when the Spirit endears you, when the Spirit clothes you, the divided are brought together, the dead are brought to life, the dry become fountains of living water, and the defeated become more than conquerors through the Spirit of our God. The Spirit will clothe. One more. You can come to the music. We're going to pray together here at the end of the service. I'll bring you just one, one more point here. This is so very, very important. And it's extremely important for some that are here today to understand this last point. The Spirit will endure. He will include, he will endue, he will endure. So very important. Are you listening? The Spirit came upon Moses. I'll tell you that. But you know what? Moses died of not being able to see the promised land. <laughs> Let those people 40 years and he died not receiving the promised land. Saul, King Saul, the Spirit of God was placed upon Saul as a king of Israel. And Saul, Saul drifted and drifted and drifted away from God. Saul would eventually seek the advice of a psychic, a medium, for advice. Here, here, once, once a man anointed 
by the Spirit of God, a man endued with the power of God, is now seeking advice from a medium. And Saul had the kingdom taken from him. He died in battle. If you remember David, after committing adultery and murder, David's cry to the Lord was, please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Throughout the Old Testament, we see places where leaders were anointed, men of God were anointed with the power of God was placed upon their life. But many times it was a temporary occurrence for a specific purpose. And sometimes we even saw where they lost that anointing, where they lost the presence of God, where they lost their way, where the Spirit was removed from them. And maybe as I've been preaching today, and I've talked about the inclusiveness of the Spirit, and I've talked about the imbuing of power of the Spirit. You're here today, and you say, but you don't know me, and, and you don't know what I've done, and you don't know all the problems that are in my life, and you don't know the rebellion and that I've had in my heart, and you don't know where I, you don't know all these things about me. You might say, Pastor, I remember back when I was a teenager, or, or a young man, or woman, or I remember when I was filled with the Spirit of God, and I remember when I gave my life to the Lord, but I've run from God, and I've rebelled against God, and I've walked away from the Lord, and I've done my own thing, and I, I hear what you're saying today, but these things, I don't know that they apply to my life, because I am like a Saul, or I am like a David, I, I'm like these people you're talking about, where I've just missed out, I've lost out. Most remarkable things about God's preview of Pentecost is found in the words of Jesus in John chapter 14. Jesus tells us that our relationship with the Spirit would be a different relationship with the Spirit than any of those in the old covenant. That we would be a part of a new covenant new relationship, a new promise. And this is what he says in John 14 and 16. Please get this. Jesus says, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide in you forever. Isn't that amazing? Somebody needs to hear this today. Even though you've run, even though you've rebelled, even though you've given up on God, there has been a deposit made in your life. Maybe that voice has grown so dim because you've tuned him out for so long. But it is my prayer today that God is going to revive the spirit that has been deposited into your life. Because God never placed his spirit in anyone. Not a single new covenant believer has God placed his spirit in that he ever planned on removing. He intends on keeping you. He intends on lifting you up out of the mire you play. He intends on picking you up. Do you hear me today? Do you hear what I'm saying today? He says, I will endure forever. Not a temporary, not an on and off relationship. Not he loves me this week, but I don't know about next. An enduring relationship with the Holy Spirit. Not a relationship where the Spirit moves out when we fail, but a relationship that when we fail, the Spirit lifts us up. The Spirit encourages us. The Spirit shines the light of God's grace upon us. The Spirit leads us down the path that leads to the Lord's righteousness. Down the path that leads to encouragement and strengthening. This is what I'm talking about today. 
the spirit that shows himself strong in our weakness. I guess what I'm trying to say is you really thought that you chased him away but you haven't. He is ready. He is ready to pick you up, to embrace you, and to help you. Can we stand? I want to say this, and I want you to hear what I'm saying in the heart of what I'm saying here. Because nobody loves a service where you can feel the presence of God, where hearts are stirred, where life. Nobody loves that more than me. Nobody loves that more than me. A service where we get happy, a service where the goosebumps come up and you can just feel God in this. Nobody loves that more than me. My prayer is that we have those services every week. My prayer is that every day I'm experiencing that. But I want you to hear this today. Pentecost did not happen so that we can have a visitation from the Lord. Because there are two many people in Pentecostal churches that live for the visitation. They live for the visitation. They get a visitation on Sunday. And then their Monday through Saturday is no different. But they live for that visitation. I felt God today. I got a touch from the Lord today. We, we heard a message in tongues. We got a blessing from God today. And if we're not careful, we just live for those visitations. Hear me today. Pentecost did not happen for us to have a visitation. Pentecost happened so that we can have an eternal relationship with Jesus Christ. So that we can know Him and His power. So that we can experience Him. Whether we're in church having worship or driving in our car or laying in our bed at night. Pentecost happened. Whether we're walking high or we're stumbling through the slide. Whether our head is held high or it's looking at the ground. No matter what you feel about yourself, Pentecost did not happen so that you could have a visitation from God. It happened so that He could abide. He didn't say, I'm going to send the Spirit so that He can visit you. He said, I'm going to send the Spirit so that He can live with you forever. Forever. So really we don't need a visitation because if every one of us can come to the understanding that the Spirit is with us He's living in us and He's not going anywhere then we could sure enough have some church we wouldn't have to wait on the heavens to open the heavens opened up 2,000 years ago on the day of Pentecost. And the Holy Spirit was poured out upon all flesh. He's here. That's what I'm trying to say. We don't have to pray Him here. He is here. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? He's here. He's here. We need to know that we're His vessels. And He doesn't intend no one abandoning us to live with us forever. I want to lead us in the song which says, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. See, I think that's key. He is here. But is he welcome? He's here. But are you open for him to come in? been running from him and he's there, he's been deposited into your life he's, he's there, but is he welcome in your life are you open and available for him to transform that's the question so is 
they sing this song. I want us to, I want us to join hands just with someone, some sign of past prayer from up here. We're gonna join hands. This is my prayer. But today as we look at the preview, that each and every week that we come in to this place, and every day that passes from today as it builds up through the week, that we would come to a fuller understanding of the spirit that lives within us and that we would become more passionate and hungry for the manifestation of the fullness of his spirit. That we would, we would be open for the gifts of God's spirit to operate in our lives. That we would walk in the power that we have been clothed with because of Pentecost. Just join hands with someone as they lead this song. I want every believer in this place to begin to pray right now. God, you're welcome in this place, in this church. We value Pentecost. We value the work of the Holy Spirit. We want to be open for you. We want to be available for you. Come on, just begin to pray right now. God, the areas of our lives where maybe the door has not been opened for your spirit to move. We open those doors in our lives right now. God, we open the door for you to bring change in us. For you to bring transformation in our lives. God, we open the door for you to have your way among us. God, we prayerfully pray, Lord, that you would fill
dating. We begin to talk to each other about the Holy Spirit. She was raised up in a, a traditional Baptist church that that, that did not, didn't believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit were actually very adverse to them. And we talked to each other, but I never I never told her anything to convince her of the gifts of the Spirit or the baptism of the Spirit. I never, we didn't discuss it that way. I never felt it was my job to convince her. But we simply both separately prayed about it. And she began to pray about the, the Spirit. And her prayer was simply, if there's something, God, that you have for me. Because she was a believer. And just to be honest with you, she's the strongest, because I've known her since I was 12. She's the strongest, purest, most integrity of any believer I've ever been around. She was a very strong believer, very, uh, I think, very sincere in her beliefs. But her prayer was, is if there's anything, God, you have for me that I don't have, I want it. That was her simple prayer. Just in the middle of church, probably 25 years ago, I guess now, God filled her with the Spirit of power and, and gave her the gifts of the Spirit, just like that. And so I'm praying and believing that as each and every one of you would focus your time to study the Word and to pray, that you want to, you may say, I got filled with the Spirit back in 1990. Where are you today? Are you walking in the fullness? Are you praying for the gifts in your life? And you may say, well, only pastor needs the gifts of the Spirit. Man, there could be somebody standing beside you today, and God wants you to speak life to them. God wants you to encourage them with a word from the Lord, and you need to be open for it. You need to be ready for that. And so I want us to focus upon this. And as we come up here and preach every Sunday for the next several weeks, I want you to already be there in the Word, already be there in prayer. Let's see what God can do when we come to church full of his word and, and have to pray for God to do something amazing among us. I want to tell you something. God is not going to let us down. God's going to do some mighty things in this house. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. So I'm going to pray one little simple prayer, and then I'm going to turn this service over to Pastor Ray to hold. God. Thank you for including us in your promise. Thank you for clothing us with your power. We, we do not have to be defeated. Even in the presence of our failures, we are more than conquerors through you, Lord. And thank you, Jesus. You didn't send your spirit to visit with us, but to live in us forever. Thank you for sticking with us through thick and thin. Thank you for being greater. Thank you for being faithful, even when we were not. And we give you praise and glory for this. And thank you, God, as the people begin to read about your spirit and pray concerning the Spirit, that you would open up their eyes to see that they can receive a power that they have not yet walked in. And we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody said amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big praise. Hallelujah. Right, let's give the Lord a big praise in this place. Thank you for listening to Live Worship Center, 1604 Golden Springs Road, where we are proclaiming the way, the truth, and the life. For more information about our church, visit us on the web at www.lifewc.org.